This is Q on CBC Radio 1 across Canada, Sirius 137 across North America, internationally at cbc.ca, and our Canada for Haiti special continues. This next story takes us to Haiti, but more than 70 years ago. In 1937, the American music archivist and historian Alan Lomax traveled to Haiti to capture that country's music and ended up recording more than 50 hours of Haitian music. Those recordings once thought to be unworthy of release, have now been made available to the public thanks to the work of one man. Gage Averill is a musicologist and a scholar of Haitian music who teaches at the University of Toronto. He was chosen by Alan Lomax's daughter to bring the music to the public and created a CD collection uh, entitled Alan Lomax in Haiti that is said to feature the oldest recordings of Haitian music and ceremonies. Gage uh, Averill uh, was going to return to Haiti this week to unveil the collection and attend the same jazz festival that Jane Bidette was due to attend in Port-au-Prince, but uh, instead he joins me now in Studio Q. Hello, sir. Hi, Jean. How are you? Good to have you here. You were supposed to be back in Haiti this week to distribute Mm -hmm. the collection to cultural centers and libraries across the island. What was your reaction when you heard of this earthquake? Uh, Well, the reaction had nothing to do with the the collection for for a couple days. Uh, I had seen... I, I. came home from a meeting. I heard about this on the radio and turned around, and uh, the first thing I saw was the picture of the palace collapsed. Now, there are, there are trage- human tragedies of a much greater scale, but uh, symbolically, with a, with a Haitian sense of, of nationhood and the importance of these, these monuments to Haiti, uh, that was a crushing blow. I sat there with my jaw open uh, and started started to cry. It was uh, quite extraordinary. Tell us about these recordings you were due to present there. What kinds of Haitian music did Alan Lomax record? He recorded just about everything. That, uh, he was voracious. Uh, I mean, he had certainly had preferences. He wanted to, he loved work brigade music. He, he loved the sound of people working and singing. Uh, but he recorded uh, hundreds of children's songs. One thing that we didn't even didn't include in this set is the songs and the, the song stories and the stories in Creole. Uh, we just didn't think we could get a, a, a listenership for that. But he recorded Haitian jazz, troubadour music, this kind of rough, rustic uh out in the street sounds of uh, carnival, rah rah, which is voodoo on parade. The earliest voodoo jazz ceremonies. Um, it's uh, uh, old old singers doing French romance songs. It was it's hmm. it's quite spectacular. Uh, the music was collected throughout 1936 and 1937. Also, yeah. a very chaotic time in ha- Haiti's history. What was happening then, and how does the music sure. reflect it? Well, just uh, the United States had occupied Haiti in uh, between 1915 and 1934. So, uh, dur- and during that period, there was a, a nationalist up, this is what happens under occupations, right? A nationalist upswelling. Haiti became much more interested in, in its African roots. Um, the elite that had governed the country for so many uh, decades um, was, I think, undermined by, the, by their capitulation to U.S. Uh, occupation. So there was a kind of a black uh, identity movement, an African identity movement. And, uh, but also lots of prurient interest in Haiti uh, around issues of voodoo and, uh, and zombies and things like that. They've been writing about that in, in journalistic articles in the, during the occupation. So uh, after the American occupa- occupiers left, a number, number of ethnographers, a- anthropologists and the like went to Haiti. It was a, it was a period of cultural ferment and, uh, and study, and Alan was one of those. Can you speculate, Gage, on, on what the earthquake's destruction might mean for the future of Haitian music, if not the musicians themselves? Well, I, c- I can spe- speculate, but it's going to be a while before we know well. Uh, as, as Jane mentioned, a number of uh, bands that have been hit very hard by this, musicians, I know that some of the, uh, uh, the leading older musician from the previous generation is still missing and, um, and presumed dead. Uh, many of the musicians who live in, you know, happily decent housing, which is concrete housing, often on hillsides with a view, that was housing that was hit pretty hard. And I'm, I'm quite worried about the uh, sort of artisan, music artisan class uh, in mm. Haiti. One thing that's helping, of course, is that so many live abroad, and uh, they'll be back returning to Haiti and playing. Uh, what, what this earthquake has also taken out is the, um, many of the venues, um, the larger venues. The school that I used to teach at was a music school. And that's lost its concert hall. Uh, so there'll be quite a long time before there are places for musicians to play or or gigs to play. And so the the livelihood has also been lost. What do you hope these recordings uh, might be able to offer the people of Haiti in in the future? Mm. Well, you know, I mentioned uh, earlier that the about the loss of the the edifice, the buildings, the monuments. Uh, there's also a. Uh, I'm hoping that this becomes a bit of a monument to uh, Haitian creativity and culture and resistance. Um, 
the uh, there is a extraordinary culture in Haiti, um, probably more singing and dancing and uh, and storytelling uh, per capita than anywhere in the world. Uh, and I think that I think Haiti is going to have to rely on this. It's always been a way of getting news around and sharing perspectives in bad times. Uh, I think it's going to be that much more powerful in the uh, the years ahead. You're you're holding on to empirical history that may 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 not exist anymore. Yeah. It may have been destroyed uh, in in Haiti. Well, one of one of the uh, interesting moments in, as we uh, worked on this project was when I was uh, introducing Catherine Dunham, who's a, a famous uh, African American dancer who passed away recently. And uh, I got up to speak to introduce her. And I realized in my computer I had I had all these recordings of people that she had worked with on a, in a voodoo um, peristyle in a voodoo temple. I turned to her and asked her if I could play them, and she had, was crying at the end of this and said, "You know, in your computer there, you've got a digital govi. You know, you've got mm. you've got a, a pot that that keeps the souls of of uh, the departed." And uh, and I've thought about that a lot in here, and in, and I think it plays even more of an important role. Not only are these, is this a a period, important period of Haitian culture that's gone, um, but in fact uh, now we have so many challenges in Haitian culture. I think this is a uh, so end up going to end up being a fairly powerful statement. Gage, I very much appreciate you coming in today, uh, being, to be being here, part Jim. of this uh, Canada for Haiti special. And, and uh, you know, I think we all hope that you can repatriate those recordings soon. And we'll and get around that. Actually, the Clinton Global Fund is working on getting out um, uh, PSAs and short snips of, of this to Haitian radio, so it'll actually start playing in Haiti soon. Thank you, Gage Averill, uh, the author of a day. Uh, a Day for the Hunter, A Day for the Prey, Music and Power in Haiti. And he's curated a CD box set of Haitian music called Alan Lomax in Haiti, available now from Heart Recordings. Uh, this is Messi Papa Vincent. Mm -hmm. 